<laughs> thank you, thank you. My name is Ray. I've been in Alaska 14 years now, and uh, I was living for quite a while up to Steve's Highway, about mile 42. And, uh, well, some of y'all that might live out of town a little bit, you know what it's like to do chores outside every day all winter long. And, you know, the things you might come across like critter tracks and wolverine, oh, maybe a lynx every now and then, common moose tracks, and uh, wolf track. Well, in the winter of 12 and 13, uh, seems like most of the time we were up doing trapping and everything, we always saw a lot of large wolf tracks that winter. And that particular winter was a long one. If you remember the spring of 2013, we had winter till June. And uh, in May, it's kind of a gathering place at Fox, at the Holland Dog. There are uh, a lot of those people you don't see all winter long, but when the Howland Dog opens up and friends gather and turned out ukulele Russ was playing, my good friend that time, and I'd been out cutting firewood for quite a while that day. I was kind of pooped and looking forward to a quiet evening at the cabin by the river. Well, when I got in, there was already a couple of messages. Ray, come on to town, we're having fun. And I thought, no, I'm not gonna answer that. Two, three more, more people called and Come on, Ray, come tell them we're having fun. I'm like, no, no, it's not looking like good weather out. I think I'm going to stay home tonight. So finally, about 9 30, 10 o'clock, I got my second wind. And I thought, well, okay. So when you live that far out of town, every time you go to town, you want to make it count. You need to get groceries or something. And I thought, well, I am kind of low on chainsaw gas. So now I got a reason to go to town. <laughs> So, one of the other things I did living that far out of town is I bought me a little Volkswagen Jetta. I've had a Chevy pickup or a Suburban my whole life. But gas prices, you know how that goes, you gotta downsize. And that Volkswagen's got a really big trunk. You can get a lot of stuff in there. So in mid-May, it's getting dark, 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. And that particular night, it was kind of cloudy and foggy and half rain and half snow. And like I said, that's the time we had winter all the way to June. So we still had six foot snow banks on each side of the highway. So visibility wasn't real good. I'm doing about 45 or so and get around the corner of 32 mile. And in the fog, in my lane in front of me, I see a pair of legs and I look a little closer, get a little closer. I'm like, wow, somebody's dog got out. And there's three or four people living around 32 mile, and I have no one of them does have a big German Shepherd. I was thinking, oh man, their dog got out. So I get a little closer, a little closer, and I see another dog. And then I realize those are not dogs, those are wolves. And I see three of them. And then I get a little closer to them, and I see four more in front of them. And then I notice there's still a couple more in front of them. Man, the goose pimples were getting bigger by the mile. And I, I get a little closer, I beep the horn. Now my Volkswagen is black. All these wolves were dark black, brown, mostly black, brown, a little bit of gray. And I get right up behind them and I tap the horn a little bit. It didn't even phase them. They didn't turn around and look at me. They, they didn't do anything. They just stayed right in my lane. And I want to add, by the way, they were all in the southbound lane. None of them were over there in the northbound lane. I guess they read their manual. I don't know. But, and they were doing between 28 and 30 miles an hour. So finally, I kind of tapped one in the butt a little bit with my front bumper, which all the butts of them wolves were about this much taller than the hood of that Volkswagen. And so finally, two of them went this way, one went this way, and I get up a little closer, and I'm so excited, I'm not even sure what gear to put it in. I think I was over revving it, and then all of a sudden I was lugging it, and okay, so I got ahead of them, and then I noticed in my mirror, they came around back behind me. Wow, now I got four of them in front of me and I'm kind of 
catching up to them and the one big guy was turning around and showing me his fangs and like what are you doing here but I think maybe I was giving him light to run down a highway with <laughs> now there's four ahead of me and three ahead of them the guy on the right he came over by my right hand door and he's looking at me through the window and I'm looking at him through the window and I thought well I got electric windows so I started to roll it down a little bit <laughs> And that's when he started biting my rear view mirror. So I rolled it back up. So now I got one guy on the right and I got, you know, six in front of me and three behind me. And I'm in my Volkswagen thinking, you know, I should have brought the truck. <laughs> so we get going down the road a little ways. I'm not sure what to do. I didn't have a gun with me. And the one time I didn't have a camera with me either because I really would have liked to have pictures of this, you know. It didn't happen to me before. So we get down the road a little bit, and I think they were getting tired of me being with them, and that's when I noticed there was one wolf way up front, about an eighth of a mile way up front, or a little less than that, but I could see him even in the fog. So gradually, gradually, they all started peeling off, jumping over the snowbank, and I'm still doing about 25 to 30 miles an hour. Well, okay, they're leaving, I guess, and I got up to the one that was way up front, and as soon as I got to him, he jumps over the bank, and there's a little bit of a clearing there. I seen him go out about 30 feet. I stopped the car, and I looked around, make sure none of the other ones were catching up, and I just stopped. I got out of the car, and I looked at him, and he was over there. He sat down in the snow, and he was looking at me, catching his breath, and then he did. And he stood up and he kind of bowed. And then he ran off in the woods. And I'm looking around still, I don't see the other ones. I said, well, I guess I can go to town now. <laughs> Gridlock in Chattanooga. <laughs> so I get to town and I, I had a couple sodas and I said hello to everybody and told them my wolf story. And, and it was a lot of fun doing that. But, you know, I just couldn't stay there any longer. I wanted to go back up there between mile 32 and 30. I think I needed to keep going. Maybe I could have catching them going the other way. I don't know. So I went up there and I just drove 20 miles an hour through those three miles, but I never did see them. And it was really getting foggy then, so top speed on the highway that night probably was about 35. I got back home. I... I couldn't think about anything else. I stayed up late still thinking about it. I went to bed dreaming about it. I woke up early the next morning and I got a friend of mine at 32 Mile. His name is Paul. And I called him and I told him what happened. He says, Ray, you were up last night watching one of them Twilight movies, weren't you? <laughs> I'm like, no, man, it really happened. I swear, he says, okay, okay. So we all go about our day, and a couple hours later, Paul calls me back. He goes, hey, man, I see hundreds of wolf tracks going from the river to the highway. And that's at 32 mile. And then he says, I see where they're going towards the lodge. And I said, see? <laughs> and then later on that day, of course, word got to Chattanooga Lodge, what had all happened in one of my stories, you know, and everybody thought, oh, yeah, all right. But... I guess somebody found that day just a mile north of the lodge where a pack of wolves took down a cow moose right there on the highway. There was a trail of blood going over the bank and people followed it and they, you know, they'd seen where the moose had been taken down. So Ronnie Franklin from Chattanooga Lodge called me up and he said, well, I heard your story and I just wanted you to know we verified it. So then I went to the lodge to tell the story to everybody, and I found out that this story is worth anywhere from two to five beers every time I tell it. <laughs> so thank you, Wolves. And, you know, I was a truck driver most of my life. I got a little, almost two million miles on me, but that mile and a half there was one I'll never forget. There's nothing like that at Disney World, and only in Alaska. Thank you.